Assalamu alaikum, wa alaikum salam. There is a viral message circulating in the Arabic social media which I am translating as below. Please could you respond to it? Zakir Kareem Naik fan Twitter. It has a post showing the Twitter snapshot with my photograph. And the name of the Twitter account is Zakir Kareem Naik fan on the Twitter. It's an Arabic post which is translated as We request you all to make dua. It has been confirmed that there is a notice of arrest from the Interpol. Alhamdulillah. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raju. And there is another snapshot of the same Twitter account. It is in Arabic. And the translation is My country demands I be executed. The Interpol issues an arrest warrant against me. Britain has banned me from entering the country. I left Saudi Arabia so as not to be deported. And finally, Malaysia is banning me from delivering lectures on its soil. My only sin is that I make dawah to Allah. Oh my Lord, I am oppressed. This is a tweet which has been circulating in large numbers, maybe hundreds of thousands or millions, in the last two to three days. And Regarding this tweet, I have received hundreds of questions. I've only picked up I've only picked up one question, and this is a question from Al Ataya, a businessman from Doha, Qatar. And because he has translated the complete tweet, it was in Arabic. What is my response to it? Point number one: This Twitter account, Zakir Karim Naik fan, it does not belong to me. The moment you mention fan means it is operated by someone else. I'm not aware the intention of this person who tweeted this. Maybe the intention were good. But before I give a reply to this, I would like to tell you that there are several accounts on the Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, other social media with the name Zakir Naik, which doesn't belong to me. And just about two, three years back, I wanted to know how many, how many pages are there in my name. And I thought maybe there'll be 50 to 100, I started counting. And I reached up to 1,000. There are more than 1,000 Facebook pages in my name. That was about two or three years back. Now I don't know. Similarly, in other social media, whether it be Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, many accounts are there. The one that belongs to me on the Facebook is that which has a blue tick. It is verified. Just, it's easy. So this person who runs account by the name Zakir Kareem Naik, fan, let me tell you, it doesn't belong to me, number one. And most of the information that is mentioned in this tweet, in these two tweets, it is false. As I said, maybe the intention of this person who's running this this Twitter account may be good, his intention may be good. He may be thinking that if I tweet such things, then you know, maybe Dr. Zakir Naik will get support. Allah alam is niya, but I always think good of the other Muslim brothers. So maybe his niya was good, but many a times it does more damage than good. And in the first tweet, he mentioned that the Interpol has issued an arrest warrant against me. This is totally false. And as you may be aware that the Indian government has requested the Interpol, the International Police, several times to issue a RCN, a red corner notice against me, but always they have failed. The first time the request was in 2017, towards the end of the year. And they said that Dr. Zakir Naik, he is involved in terrorism. He's a terrorist. And then one of my fans, he had a way to apply from UK. And that lawyer told me that if any government officially writes to the Interpol blaming a Muslim that he's a terrorist, 99% chances 
that he will be put on the RCN. He will be given the red corner notice. So I said, then why have we hired you? He said, maximum I can do is I can delay it. But Alhamdulillah, I have to be very frank that the lawyer was wrong. And Interpol, mashallah, was very just. And they had a committee after a few months. And they rejected the request of India, saying there is no proof at all that Dr. Zakir any act of terrorism. Their, your request lacks evidence. And they returned it back. Later on, again, the Indian government, I mean, they requested in the early part of the 2017, and towards the end of 2017, Interpol had a meeting and they rejected it. Then again, the Indian government gave a fresh application in 2018. Now, they have changed the charges, and they said Dr. Zakir Naik is giving hate speeches. They declined and they removed the charges of terrorism, and said that supporting terrorist acts and hate speech, etc. Mm. When they gave in 2018, after a few months again, the Interpol had a meeting, and again they rejected it, saying that he is a Dai, and there is no proof, as far as the claim is concerned, that he is giving hate speeches. He is propagating the religion, and he has a right to do that. The Indian government, for the third time, in 2020 gave a request and this time they removed all the earlier charges and they said that now we want him for money laundering and for money laundering if you just show some accounts etc so they showed my accounts as proof and they said Dr. Zakir Naik is collecting money and he's using this for illegal activities and therefore we want you to issue a RCN Alhamdulillah, this time too, for the third time, the decision was taken in the earlier part of this year, in 2021, and this time the reply they wrote was very strong. They said that Dr. Zakir Naik is a preacher, and he has a right to propagate, and he has a right to collect money, and is doing it legally. This is not money laundering. MashaAllah, the reply was so curt, it was a slap on the face of the Indian government. This I did not reveal to the public. It came in small news because I don't waste my time. But since this tweet was given by maybe one of my fans, I don't know who is he. But just to tell that it's totally wrong. In fact, it's the opposite. For the third time, the Interpol, in the first quarter of this year, maybe a few months back, for third time they refused the request of the Indian government, saying that Dr. Zakir Naik is a preacher, he has the right to propagate. He has the right to collect money and he's not, he's not involved in money laundering and he's following all the requirements. So your allegation is more of political. So Alhamdulillah, now imagine if the Interpol reads this tweet that Dr. Zakir Naik is saying that they have issued an arrest warrant against me, they will think what kind of an ungrateful person this is. So that is the reason such Fans, you know, some uh, there's a saying that a thousand enemies are better than one foolish friend. So maybe this person was a fan, I don't know his Nia, but this tweet has caused more damage than good. And the second tweet, he starts with saying that the Indian government wants me to be executed. I never said this, and the information is wrong. And then he says, the Interpol has issued an arrest warrant, which I described is totally wrong. In fact, they refused to issue a red corner notice against me. The third point they mentioned is that the UK government has banned my entry. Now, this is very old. Yes, the UK government in the year 2010 has excluded me, had prevented me from coming. And the only country officially that I am not allowed to enter or officially you can say excluded or banned is UK. That was in 2010 and that period was for only three years. So according to me, it lasted till 2013. So this exclusion as far as the letter which I received said from 2010 to 2013. That's a different question that if I apply for a visa to enter UK, they will not give me and they have a right to refuse. But that doesn't mean I'm banned. 
and today maybe half the countries in the world who don't want Islam to be propagated in the country would not allow me to enter. But officially, I was only banned in UK for three years from 2010 June till 2013 May. That's it. The next statement mentioned was that I left Saudi Arabia because I was going to be deported and this is totally false. In fact, because of the pandemic, I haven't been able to travel for the last one year and nine months or one year and eight and a half months. I remember I had gone to the Gulf country and I came back to attend the KL summit conference on the 17th of December 2019. I was supposed to fly out in March 2018, sorry, uh, March 2020 and the pandemic started and from that time I'm stuck. I'm here in, in Malaysia because of the pandemic and it's totally false that I, 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 I ran away from Saudi Arabia because I'm going to be deported. In fact, I was supposed to go to Umrah in March 2020, but unfortunately, because of the pandemic, people were not allowed to enter. And then I thought maybe it will, the pandemic would be relaxed. And you know, that is the reason I wasn't able to travel. And Malaysia now, the COVID-19 has increased. So to get out of the country and come in is very difficult, the restrictions. So that's the reason that I haven't traveled out of Malaysia. And the last information he gave that at present I'm in Malaysia and I've been prevented from giving any lecture in this soil. And this again is totally wrong. Never ever in my life have been ever stopped by the government officially to give any lecture. I'm coming here since 1996 and I've got the PR since April 2016 and since the problem started in India in 2016, I'm in Malaysia. And Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, in the last span of just hardly three years, in a span of three years, there have been four governments that have changed in Malaysia because of the various political situation. But Alhamdulillah, all the governments that were there previously and that came afterwards, that came, Alhamdulillah, all have been good to me. Imagine, they would think I'm so ungrateful. I'm very really thankful to the government of Malaysia. And Alhamdulillah, even all the Muslim politicians in Malaysia, mashallah, almost all, mashallah, they are in my favor. And even many of the non-Muslim politicians are in my favor. There are a few non-Muslim politicians who, for their personal benefit, may try to attack me. Majority of the non-Muslim, majority of the Muslims in Malaysia are my fans. I believe majority of the non-Muslims also in Malaysia, they like me. There may be few non-Muslims for their own political reason who may write against me and do have articles coming in the media in the print media, in the social media, which some people pick up and they think that's a reality. So I thank the Malaysian government, all the past government, they've always been good to me and I thank them and they've always stood by the truth. Alhamdulillah. So this person who has tweeted, maybe his intention was good, Allah Alam, but he caused more damage than good. So my clarification is that this is not my tweet. I never said that. Almost most of the information is wrong. And this has become viral in the last two, three days, mainly in the Arabic circle. And because it became viral, I received umpteen number of messages and text messages and voice messages from VIPs, from folks of the world, from, from Saudi Arabia, from Qatar, from UAE, from UK, from different parts of the world. And because this message became viral, they wanted to check that, am I fine? Am I good? So one thing good that this thing has done, that mashallah, many people started praying for me. So as I said, there is good and bad, pros and cons. The good part is that people started praying for me, alhamdulillah. And I also received a call from Pakistan, a very famous mufti who is from a very famous Islamic institute. And he gave a voice message, you know, praying for me. He said, 
I hope this is not true and doing dua for me and saying that what I'm doing is very good, Alhamdulillah. So I received that dua from a top, very top mufti, mashallah. And yesterday night at 2.20 a.m., about 21 hours before now, 2.20, I received the call from Sheikh Muhammad Hassan Dadu. And I was shocked. And I picked up the call and he started, you know, asking how am I, started doing duas for me, and long duas in Arabic. And I realized why he called me, though he didn't say that. Then after we conversed for a few minutes, I woke up my son because I'm not that well versed in Arabic. So I woke up my son who was sleeping, and many of the people who are close to me, including Sheikh Dadu, knows that I sleep very late in the night. So I woke up my son and he spoke to him, and I told him, and, and my son said that, you know, there is a viral message which is going on. And he said, yeah, that is the reason I called you, just to check up how you are. And then I told my son to tell him that, you know, one good thing happened because of the message is that Sheikh Dadu, mashallah, he remembered me. And he did long duas for me. Imagine, I consider Sheikh, Sheikh Muhammad Hassan Dadu to be one of the leading scholars today in the world. If you say the top five scholars, so he'll be one of them, inshallah. And alhamdulillah, so this was a benefit that he called me, he was worried, and I had several messages and text messages. I got a message from Sheikh Asim al Hakim saying that I have been asked to check up with you. I know that definitely this would be fake, but I want to confirm from you that is this news of the Interpol and the Twitter is the true, and I said it is false, and it was for me. Then I received a text message even from Sheikh Haitham al Haddad from UK asking the same question Is it true? And I said it is fake. And, uh, and I told him that there are more than 1,000 accounts in my name which people are running. And there are many fan pages in various other social media platforms. And many a times they do more harm than good. And it's extremely difficult to stop, to try and stop such things. And even if you try, you'll waste a lot of time and it will be very difficult. And even if you get a small percentage of success, the amount of new accounts that are opening, so let's do more positive work than wasting time. Because many people ask me that, why don't you stop this account? So the thing is there that people are concerned and mashallah, he took my message and he mentioned a tweet that uh, he mentioned in his Twitter and, and I think also on the Facebook page that I've spoken to Dr. Zakir Naik personally and he praised me and he did duas for me, Alhamdulillah. He repeated my message and he quoted the verse of the Quran of Surah Hujurat, chapter number 49. Verse number 6, saying that whenever you get a message from a Fasik person, from a transgressor, you check it up before you pass it on to someone else. And he quoted Hadith of the Prophet that many people repeat everything what they hear without checking up. And many times it falls into a major sin. And he told the people that have to be careful while repeating any messages. So Alhamdulillah, there are various such cases in the last one or two days, mashallah, there have been umpteen number of messages I've received, my son has received, my wife has received, my daughter has received. And so the good part of it is that many people, they did extra duas for me. But the negative part of it is that it is giving false information and people may think that I have written this information is totally wrong. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may the Muslim brothers who are my fans don't use such thing or give false information regarding me. And alhamdulillah, I would like to be very frank and I've told that in many lectures of mine, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed me and my family. And I would like to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has, I never thought, I never dreamt of leaving India. If I would ever be accused of being promoting terrorism, I have addressed so many conferences, giving talks to various polices of different countries, you know, talking on anti-terrorism. And now I have been blamed by my own country. It is all political. I never thought that I would be, I would have, that I would be hounded by my country and I was away 
and then I decided not to go back and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed me that is taking me out from India and have brought me to Malaysia which is a beautiful country my dawah has increased my iman has increased my bada has increased so alhamdulillah I can only thank Allah hadha min fazli rabbi so to say that I am oppressed let me tell you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been very kind to me. I am one of the luckiest person on the face of the earth. And I have no complaints against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all. I request all the brothers and sisters to continue doing du'as for me. And repeat to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may he help us to live our life as per the Quran and the Sayyidi. I hope that answers the question.